with vectors. So we just finished three-dimensional coordinates. So we're going to do vectors now. You saw vectors in linear algebra, for those of you who took linear algebra? Just a few. Just a few vectors? Yeah, just a few. You're just a column matrix, or row, depending on what you're doing. It was all vectors. It was all vectors <laughs> and matrices. OK. So who did not take linear algebra? And don't be afraid. All right, so if you have your hand up, you really need to probably do some extra questions out of the book for 12-2. Uh, so I would recommend the questions in the book are broken into sort of subsections. You want to do a few questions out of each subsection until you feel comfortable. So if you took linear algebra, you probably don't need to do any extra questions out of the book, uh, unless you forgot it or you didn't feel comfortable in the first place in linear algebra class. All right, so we're, all of our vectors are going to be two or three dimensional. So let's start with a definition. So we'll go with a directed line segment. A vector in Rn is a directed line segment. So you don't want to use the word ray because ray goes on forever. So we don't have <coughs> infinite vectors. So direct line segment. It's very easy to draw a vector. It looks like an arrow. Start somewhere and somewhere else. And you should be able to tell where it starts and ends. So we do that with an arrow. So there's a vector. Generally, our n, our n-dimensional space will generally be 2 or Three. So we're not going to do at least not this quarter. We don't, won't do any four-dimensional. So in R three. So what did I say about R three? That is, what do you generally not want to do in three-dimensional space? So yeah, any basically anytime you try to graph, whether it's even something as simple as a point or a vector, you the intuition you get <laughs> is generally not worth the effort it takes to graph it. So uh, when I draw things in three dimensions, I'm just going to draw. Oh look, the arrow I drew is in three dimensions. I won't put coordinate axes on here. So we'll do. I'll generally talk in three dimensional uh, space. If you want to think about two dimensional space, basically erase all everything that has a z in it, and you're going to be in. R2. So I'm going to write everything down for three dimensional space. If you're in two dimensional space, just erase the z coordinate and you'll be just fine for two dimensional space. So a vector is going to go from point A to point B. So I'll give A the coordinates x1, y1, z1 to point B will go x2, y2, z2. <coughs> you sometimes will be tempted to not use commas. I will use commas when I need to. And I will avoid using commas when I don't need to. So hopefully it will be pretty obvious we got three coordinates x, y, z. So if I was a comma, comma-ing or a punctuating person, it would look like that. So. I will use commas when it's not obvious what terms are where. So a vector from A to B is easy to draw. Well, if I knew where A and B were, well, we'll just pretend here's A and here's B. So we'll call the vector V for vector. How do I get this vector V from A and B? Oh, we did this in pre-calculus class, too. Pre-calculus, too. That would give me the length or the magnitude of the vector. Could be useful. How do we get the vector itself? What if I draw a nice picture right here? It's supposed to be a bow and arrow. And minus start. And minus start. Hopefully that should be somewhere in your memory.
I think last quarter in Calc 2, we did big minus small. Generally, was how we got the difference between two things, big minus small. I don't, I'll write it down. The reason I don't like big minus small for this is because what does, what is big and small? Is it a bigger x value, bigger y value, bigger z value, bigger magnitude? It's not. So I'm going to just leave it with n minus start and not do big minus small. If you know for sure, big minus small works when you're dealing with numbers, not when you're dealing with vectors. So if you're just in one dimension and you want to know two y coordinates, what's the difference between them, you can go big minus small. Uh, so here we're going to go n minus start, which in our case is b minus a. So that's a vector. But when we subtract, so we got b x2, y2, z2. Oh, it's a really good time to make sure your z's don't look like your 2's. Minus x1, y1, z1. Very easy to subtract. You just go one coordinate at a time. When we write vectors, we're going to use diamond notation. So that is a new, maybe new notation if you haven't used it for a while. So this is just x2 minus x1. We're just going coordinate by coordinate. So we're just subtracting x's, subtracting y's, subtracting z's. I am going to use commas now. So we got y2 minus y1, comma, z2 minus z1. I'm using commas because I don't want you to think that these are, that there's multiplication happening right there. So they're three separate parts. And now it's less obvious because you'll have stuff inside x, y, and z coordinates. So I'm using commas definitely in this case. So that's how we get vector between two points. Um, another way to write this is, I believe you can write it a, b. And you write, I think, the notation is something, any physics engineering people. <laughs> Is that how you do it, something like that? Uh, From A to B with a, I don't know, maybe it looks like that, depending on where you look. Well, it, we would do it like, uh, depending if it's a B, so it would be like B, A, B with an arrow, or just A, B with an arrow, that works. All right, we'll go A, B with an arrow, if you want to talk about the uh, going from A to B. It's a little weird, because you actually turn it around and do B minus A. But just remember N minus start. And if you're in a race, and you look <coughs> at what time you finish, subtract what time you started, that'll be your amount of time you spent in your race. So just think again, minus start. <coughs> All right, so you can also think of a bow and arrow. How do you use a bow and arrow correctly? You notch your arrow in at the front, and then you pull it back. Don't go the other way around. You could have some serious problems that way. So don't pull your bow back unless your arrow is ready. So that's another way if you're into bows and arrows. Magnitude. So magnitude has a lot of other names. We can call it length. We can call it modulus. It's usually for complex numbers, but you might see it here. You could think of it as absolute value. There's probably another word I'm not thinking about. Distance. What's that? Distance. distance. Yeah, distance between the first and last, start and end. Um, distance will work. <coughs> so those are other names for it. You'll definitely see length at different times. So we'll keep it three-dimensional. So we'll just go x, y, z, that'll be our vector. So the way we denote it, some sources use double vertical bars. I'm going to be lazy and say virtual ink and just go single uh, vertical bars. I think your textbook, does anybody other textbook open to 10, 12, 2? I think your textbook goes double. Either way, it's a very easy formula x squared plus y squared plus z squared square root. So it uses the Pythagorean uh, distance right there. Yeah, this is 
Just uses one? Yeah. Okay. Class, basically, uh, this arrow, uh, the V arrow or whatever, just use the single bars. So book notation, single bars. I'll use single bars, but just to warn you, if you look on um, YouTube or wherever you look, Wikipedia is another common place, you may see double bars. So it's the same thing. It means the same thing. I think Pythagorean triples are three numbers that add up to a perfect square without cheating and making one of them zero. I don't know. Anybody know a Pythagorean triple? Well, that would be a, I think they call those a Pythagorean double, the 3, 4, 5, or the, there's like a 7, 13, something like that. 3, 4, 5. We'll just go 1, negative 2, 3. I'm not feeling creative at the moment. So let me show you the wrongest thing you can do. What do you think is the most common wrong answer I see for the magnitude of, and it's a vector answer. So make sure this is not you. What did we do in the red here? Yeah, we took absolute value of each one individually. So don't do that. Those are not the same thing at all, all right? That is not absolute value term-wise. So please don't do that. If I see this, uh, I will probably just give you zero and not even look to see what other insightful things you had. So this is very wrong. the most wrong. Well, there's probably other more wrong things you can do. All right, it's wrong for lots of reasons. One of the main ones is I should be getting a number out of this, not a vector. So it's not even the right type of answer. So go ahead and compute magnitude of V right now. Should only take you a couple, maybe 20 seconds. There should be plenty of time. Squared 14. Another thing I see people do is they'll put a negative and then not square the negative properly. So a really easy way to avoid that, just don't even bother writing negative because you know you're going to square the negative out. So just go the absolute value of each of those terms. Don't, don't even bother writing negative when you're getting magnitudes. So we'll compute a vector from A to B. A will be negative 3, 4, 1. And B will be negative 5, 2, oh, 2. So your answer should be in three dimensions. So your answer will be in diamond brackets. And I want you to find the three numbers, the x, y, and z components of the vector. So just scroll up, and you'll get your uh, you just have to subtract. There it is. Just do B minus A. So take 10 seconds, get B minus A. Well, that's Pythagorean triple or quad. 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared is 9. Oh, look at that.
do that. All right, questions on that? Should be, well, we're subtracting, so it would be negative 5 plus 3, or minus a negative 3. So this is a very obvious theorem. So any vector, if your magnitude is 0, that means you know exactly which vector it is. It is what we call the 0 vector. So the 0 vector is different than the number 0. So the number 0 is just the 0 you're thinking about. The vector 0 depends on what dimension you're in, but you could think of it as basically the origin of your coordinate system. So I just say the 0 vector, if you're in two dimensions, you would just have the vector 0, 0, you're in three dimensions, 0, 0, 0, whatever dimension you're in, that's the number of zeros you got. So we write the 0 vector as bold. So I just make a 0 and just circle around like five times to make it bold. And then the, right, the number 0 is the way you've been writing it for a long time. So if your penmanship is too good, you might be able to go around your 0 five times and nobody could really tell. So if you're like me and your penmanship's not perfect, your zero will look bold, probably in your second or third lap. All right, so any questions on number zero versus vector zero? Now, when you're talking, you'll probably just say the word zero. And when you're talking, it might be ambiguous, which zero do you mean? But when you're writing, it should always be the bold zero for the vector zero. That could work too, yeah. I mean, I'll probably know what zero you mean in context, but I do. If you're talking about the zero vector, I'd in some way note that it's you'll probably be in three dimensions, so it'll probably be the zero 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 vector. Yeah. So you can always write that. So our two operations: addition and scalar multiplication. Do they do any relativity in physics where you have a fourth dimension that has a weird next quarter? Yep. So you'll do at some point you'll do a four dimensional where your fourth coordinate doesn't behave like your other three coordinates. So you could actually have a point that's your distance zero away from another point. Uh, we don't have to worry about that in this class because we're following regular Euclidean distance and all that fun stuff. I think so this is completely off topic. I think their metric is something like x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus t squared. <coughs> is that right? Somebody, physics nerd? Yeah. Something like that. It's minus a t squared. So you can actually have a uh, metric that has, or a distance function that has zero could be a distance even though the points are actually not the same. And they have other, yeah, other cool stuff as well. Um, also means you can have an imaginary, technically you could have square root of negative numbers as your distance. So your magnitude wouldn't even be real valued necessarily. All right. So what do they call that? I think that's like starting to get into relativity or something like that. So we don't need to worry about it. So I think that would be relativity in R4. Might seem wrong when you first start looking at it, but it works for the most part. So let's talk about addition and scalar multiplication. So addition is easy to do. We'll keep everything in R3. So 
So two vectors. So you add them together, super easy to do. You just go x coordinates added together, a1 plus a2, comma, b1 plus b2, comma, c1 plus c2. So this is what we call vector addition. Does this make sense? The vector 1, 2, 3 plus the number 4? Not really. Maybe if you added 4 to all of them, it might be reasonable. But this doesn't make sense. So there's no addition of vectors plus numbers. All right, so you have a vector plus number. Doesn't make sense. So this is all things we're not going to be doing. I don't think I need to do a vector addition example. That's too easy. Let's do, so our first multiplication will be scalar multiplication. So we'll take our vector, we'll go a, b, c, and alpha will be a number. So V is ABC, alpha will be a real number. So you can multiply alpha times V. And what makes sense here, you're basically distributing that number to all pieces right here. So this will be alpha A, alpha B, alpha C. That's scalar multiplication. Now, if you unmultiply, what do we call unmultiplying? It's my favorite F word. Factoring. factoring. You could unscalar multiply and factor. So you could think of it as scalar factoring. <coughs> you can multiply in a number, you could unmultiply or factor out a number as well. <coughs> so that's scalar multiplication. I'm at 196, obviously. All right, so that would be pretty crazy to ask you to compute this directly. Do you want to square these numbers? No. no, maybe 49, but I don't really want to square the other ones. That's not very exciting. What could I factor out? I could do a 7. I think we can get out 49, hopefully, if I did my arithmetic right. And what do we have left in our vector? <coughs> 2, negative 1, 4. Like that. So we factored out 49. Can you get the magnitude of 2, negative 1, 4? Yes. That's not so bad. You can't do that. You're just being lazy or you're in the wrong class. The question is, how do we deal with this? <coughs> so I'm going to write the scalar property, uh, scalar multiplication combined with uh, magnitude property. So you can't compute magnitude of alpha times v is the absolute value of alpha times the magnitude of v. It's a little bit weird because 
alpha is a number, so this is the absolute value. And same exact notation, but because v is a vector, this is the magnitude. So that means for us down here, I could write it as absolute value 49 multiplied by a magnitude of 2, negative 1, 4. We can easily compute 49 is 7 squared. 7 squared times square root. 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 4 squared should be 21. And that'll be good enough for web work right there. So questions on this magnitude factoring problem. Could I factor out negative 49 instead of positive 49? Sure could. Not hard to do. And we're left with negative 2, positive 1, negative 4. And keep going. Absolute value negative 49 times square root 21, et cetera, et cetera. Same answer. All right, so you can factor out positive number, negative number, because you're going to do absolute value, and it won't matter in the end. Oh, I should probably tell you why this works all the time instead of just this one example right here. So it's very easy to show why this works all the time. Let's go and use somewhere, what do we write the definition? Oh, here we go. So if we write the vector v as x1, x2, all the way to xn. So maybe I have more than three coordinates, so I can't just go x, y, z, because I run out of letters. So I'll just go x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, et cetera. So how do I write magnitude v here? Summation x i squared i equals 1 to n, and square root. It's good to refresh on your uh, summation notation. So nothing crazy is happening. I'm just saying it's each of the x, each of the coordinates squared added together. That's the summation, and then you square root the whole thing. So we'll use this idea, and we'll look at alpha times v. So it's easy to write down in summation notation. This will be alpha x i squared i equals, oop, not zero. It's not computer science. Start at 1 to n square root that whole thing. All right, so I just used our little summation form for magnitude right there. So alpha times xi squared, <coughs> I could write as alpha squared times xi squared. So I just broke it down. It's multiplication, so I'm not doing any bad um, foiling stuff. So it's just multiplication. What can I do with alpha squared now? Alpha squared is constant, doesn't change with i. So I'm going to factor it out of the summation. So we're going to have alpha squared times summation i equals 1 to n xi squared square root. 
All right, we're almost there. So I'm going to break the square root up across the alpha and the summation. What is absolute value of alpha squared? Oh, I just said Freudian slip. So the square root of alpha squared is the absolute value of alpha. So if you square it, it'll become positive, and then you uh, square root it, it'll go back to the positive version. It won't go back to the negative version. And the second part is magnitude v right there. So that's just regular magnitude v. So we just showed why you're allowed to write it like this right here. So that's why you're allowed to factor out alpha. And the few steps it took to show that. And that works in n dimensions. So as long as n is one or more, this will work. So properties. These would be algebraic, well, algebraic properties. So u, v, and w will be n-dimensional vectors. Alpha, beta will be scalars. So alpha and beta will be scalars. So make sure your v doesn't look like your u. So First property, u plus v, is v plus u. What do we call that property? Commutative. So this is a commutative property of addition. So if you have trouble remembering commutative, how did you get to school today? You probably commuted, so that means you changed your location. Unless you're watching on YouTube, you probably didn't. But uh, if you're here, you commuted to get here, unless you slept here. Hopefully you didn't. So commutative just means change. You can change the location. So u plus v, v plus u. Oh, I should be more careful. What zero do I mean, u plus zero, if u is a vector? So I mean the zero vector. So. Uh, to be bold when you're talking about the zero vector. So there we go. That's the zero vector. We call this the additive identity will be the zero vector. And what next? How about the number zero times u? So think about Multiplication, what is the number zero? Scalar multiplication. So think alpha is zero. What type of vector are we going to get out? I'm looking right here if alpha is zero. I'll be the zero vector. So it's a little bit weird. Zero u equals zero, but the zero vector in this case. It's a bit strange. And now, what do we call this property? It's definitely a property of scalar multiplication. We call this the associative property. So you can multiply. Uh, beta times your vector and then alpha after that, or you can multiply your scalars first, take that number and multiply it by your vector. So it's the associative. Property um, of scalar multiplication.
So if you add alpha and beta together and then multiply that by u, there's a reason we call this multiplication, scalar multiplication addition. What property will we get when we multiply a sum into a product? So we get the distributive property. So this will be alpha u plus uh, beta u. Distributive. Distribute A T I V E. There's another distributive property. It looks like alpha U plus V. Very similar. This is going to be the distributive property, but what changed? between this line, this alpha times u plus v, and the alpha plus beta times u. So we're adding vectors, and then one scalar multiplication, instead of before we had one vector multiply across a sum. So they're going to behave in a similar way. So this will be alpha u plus alpha v. And we'll also call this a distributive property. If I felt like writing more, the first one would be distributive property of probably scalar addition and multiplication. The second one would be distributive property of scalar multiplication on vector addition. But I'm not going to write all those details out. Properties. So we, of course, have the regular associative property of addition. How about the number 1 times the vector u? Think about scalar multiplication. What does multiplying 1 into a vector do? Basically, it doesn't do anything. It gives you the same vector. So we're going to get 1 times u is u. And this is what we call the scalar um, identity. <coughs> so 1 is a scalar multiplicative identity, whereas 0 was the additive uh, identity. And last up, what can I add to you to get the 0 vector? Negative u. So what is negative u? It's just take u and make every coordinate the opposite sign. That'll be negative u. Uh, this is what we call the additive inverse. So I will not hold you responsible for the names of all these properties. So we just need to know they exist. And they should feel pretty much like regular algebra properties you had before. There really shouldn't be anything on the board that's uh, shocking at all. If uh, u and v were numbers and w were numbers, I think everything would hold up and work out exactly the same. <coughs> all right, unit vectors. So unit, obviously the word will be uni. So just like unicorn, there's going to be one. So what one is it? What property of unit vectors are one? Magnitude. Magnitude. So their x-coordinate, y-coordinate could be, well, they couldn't be anything, but they don't need to be one, but the magnitude needs to be one. That's how you get a unit vector. Magnitude u equals one. All right, so that's what makes a unit vector.
So u and v are parallel if, so there's vector u and there's vector v. Maybe one's longer, one's shorter. They could be the same length. It's a little silly to talk about parallel if the vector has length 0. What direction is it pointing if it has length 0? It's not really pointing any direction, so it's silly to talk about two vectors pointing the same way if one of them or both of them are 0. So we'll exclude the 0 vectors. What equation will hold if they're parallel? Looks like the picture I draw, let's say v is twice as long as u. So how do I, it doesn't mean v equals u. There we go. So v equals a scalar times u. And you have to make sure alpha is not 0, or else you'd have a 0 vector on the one side. So alpha should not be 0. So if alpha is greater than 0, you could say u and v are in the same direction. <coughs> so in our example, uh, u was 2 times u would equal v. So that says they're the same direction, and v is basically twice as long. What happens if alpha is less than 0? What can we say about their direction? So it will be the exact opposite directions. Uh, so we'll say opposite. I don't want to say anti-parallel, because I don't know. That probably means something. It sounds like a good word to use here, but he calls it anti-parallel? Yeah. All right. So I had Wikipedia that before I started. But it very well could be this right here. All right. But I think we know what we mean by opposite directions. Got u that way. And then v is going the exact opposite way, like that. All right. So that is parallel. So we got unit vectors. We got parallel. Now it looks like I sort of treated u and v a little differently. I put the alpha on one side and not on the other. How could I rewrite this equation so alpha is on the v side? So we just go 1 over alpha, basically. So I could say this is the same thing as 1 over alpha v equals u. And remember, as long as alpha is not 0, I don't have to worry. So we said alpha is not 0, or else you got a 0 vector hanging around somewhere, and that's not good. So I'd, u is not special. V is not special. I just put alpha on one side instead of the other, arbitrarily. So well, if I say u is not special, it sounds like I'm saying something else. And I would say you are not special. It's obviously false. We're all special and wonderful. Except you. Except me? Except you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is wrongest. <laughs> Find both. All right, so first of all, is vector v a unit vector already? No, it's way too big. Anytime you see one coordinate bigger than one, because in tight, uh, anytime you see one coordinate bigger than one, you're never going to get a smaller magnitude than one. So uh, you can see right away, as soon as I see a 2 in here, definitely going to be too big. All right, find both unit vectors parallel to v. So let's go ahead and compute magnitude v. Hopefully, I chose a Pythagorean quadruple. Did you find anti-parallel? Yeah, it is. Is that what that means? And it means specific Opposite. Opposite. All right, so we could say anti-parallel now. That was Wikipedia. That was Webster's Dictionary. Yeah. Okay. Anti-parallel. All right, magnitude.
All right, three. So is three times too long? What does your intuition tell you to do? There you go, divide by three. So we're going to go v uh, divided by three. Of course, that's v divided by its own magnitude. All right, so it's three times shorter, or one third as long. Questions on getting that unit vector. <coughs> now I said both unit vectors. There's another unit vector that's parallel or anti-parallel, so you can make it all negative. So here's this is one vector that's parallel, another vector that's parallel, uh, basically negative v over three. So it's the other. Uh, parallel vector. And that shows two thirds, negative two thirds, one third. What does your textbook say about parallel? Does it allow alpha to be negative? If you look, probably in the index might be a fast way to do that. So this is a good place to end.